Birds, Neil Young, absolutely beautiful tune. We're going to take a look. This is, of course, from 1970, after the gold rush. And uh, if, if you're familiar with the song, you know that it's a piano song. Most of the time when he plays it, actually, whenever he plays it live, he always just goes over and bangs out the chords, gently coaxes the notes out of the piano, and sings this incredibly beautiful tune. Um, we are not going to work on an instrumental version of it just yet. I may add that to a, you know a little further down the road. Because uh, so, but just wanted you to. I didn't want to try to sing it as a demo of what's going on here because, uh, and it, never mind. You probably know. So, um, but there's a really interesting version that came out on the uh, 50th anniversary uh, edition of Deja Vu, where he was playing this with on the guitar, and so that's what we're doing. This this is really based on his guitar version from the 50th Deja Vu uh, release that came out um, last year, 2020, 50 years from Deja Vu, and also 50 years from After the Gold Rush. But, um, and so he was, he was just strumming this. simple double time strumming we're gonna talk about that but uh, Graham Nash added some harmony to it in the vocal part I mean in the, in the chorus of course in the vocal part where else are you gonna add harmony well you can do it on the guitar part too but um, while Neil's singing this Graham added in a part that went like this Putting them together is what we're going to do later. So I will add, I have a segment uh, coming up that will talk about just the harmony that Graham sang in the chorus. And if you, so if you have a friend that can do this with you, you could work on that. Um, another kind of really interesting thing, or a really good thing for everybody to work on, is when a song is going this slow, these quarter note beats are going at about 65 beats a minute, just a little faster than, than one per second. And whenever a song is going that slowly, you, ha you can't just keep your stroke rate at the downs at the speed of quarter notes. It has to be twice as fast. So we have to, we call this double time strumming, where you're really strumming downs at the speed of eighth notes, which gives you the opportunity to play sixteenth notes. So if I'm, I'm just playing a G chord here, and if I just played as quarter notes at that speed, it'd be like one, two, three. Four. And if I add eighth notes in there as ups, we'd have this. One and two and three and four and. What we need to do is all of those eight strokes have to be downs. One and two and three and four and. So that there are eight downs in the measure, consequently eight ups, which means if you hit all the strokes, you're strumming sixteenth notes. Um, and a really important thing about ballady type songs or, or sl slow songs where we're doing this double time strumming is most of the time you want to hit beat one and not hit the end of one. You don't want to hear this one and two and three and four and. It's really important that the first beat is played as a quarter note, which means you still have to take the fake stroke on the end of one, one and two. So the next stroke doesn't happen till two. But at that point, you start throwing some ups in there. One and two. So we'll break all that down in a segment uh, dedicated to double time strumming. But that, that's almost all of it right there. But I, I will elaborate a little bit more on it. We'll talk about the chord progression. Most of the chords are pretty easy. Uh, there's a B minor in there. Uh, now, there is a really odd time signature change that happens in the, towards the end of the chorus. And um, that's also why it's really important that you're strumming at the speed of eighth notes, because it's an odd number of eighth notes that happen in two consecutive measures. Uh, most people, when they play or when they cover this, neglect to do that and kind of square it up. So we'll talk about that. But if you try playing along with Neil, he's very consistent about putting in these two odd measures in the middle of the chorus, real closer to the end of the chorus. Uh, it's the second to last little phrase. Anyway, 
So that's what's coming up here. A, a lesson on birds from 1970 and how Neil did it acoustically with Graham Nash adding some beautiful harmony.